Okay, so uh, well, I, I think that the Bukhadin Boskot said that uh, the football is football, and today I must say that football is also data. Uh, now here I have a chuleta with some questions. <laughs> but uh, Fabio, well, first of all, nice to meet you today. Uh, it's the first time we, we meet each other. Thanks okay. for having me here. Yeah. Yeah. Great location. Like okay. um, uh, Fabio, first question. Uh, what do we mean by uh, data in sport? Yeah. So data and sports are starting really to connect each other, right? So we are living probably the, the biggest transformation uh, in the, next, the last few, few years. Uh, sport property are now looking data differently, luckily, and, and they are starting to shift from a poor media company to a data-driven company, which probably is the biggest, is the biggest shift in my opinion, right? Um, La Liga, for instance, started in 2013 no. to invest in technology and data. And, and now with La Liga Tech, we are, we are helping, actually, sport properties to, to do things differently, to think in something differently about data, and specifically to help companies using data. Okay, yeah. So let's talk about the Liga Tech, because I, I know that uh, perhaps uh, some of the audience don't know exactly what the Liga Tech is, what kind of services uh, do you provide to companies? Uh, what are your digital assets? What are your products? Can, you, can we talk about the, the La Liga Tech? In yeah, sure. Terms, yeah? So La Liga Tech project started approximately a year ago um, with, I would say, two big missions. The first one, to accelerate uh, the sport industry okay. overall. So uh, accelerate the digital transformation of mm -hmm. the sports properties, mm -hmm. uh, but also sport brands and sports broadcasters and mm -hmm. all the media partners. And second is really to help clubs, federations and leagues to take the lead in terms of uh, data and data-driven strategy, which basically means not just helping them on match data analysts, yeah. or analysis like when we think about data and sport, we always think about uh, match data analysis, tracking event in data, but I think it's much more than that. Data has to be there when it's about fan engagement, has to be there when it's about bringing new, um, uh, new content enrichment strategy for our media partners, and, and data has to be there as well when it's about competition management, how we can enhance the, 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 the competition, how the competition can be more efficient, okay. and overall how can increase the value uh, by, by time. So the uh, La Liga TV, La Liga Pass, can you describe these products? Yeah. So they are part of the same, let's say, ecosystem, that is the, the OTT, the over-the-top solutions. Um, La Liga Sport TV has been launched a few years ago with basically with the objective to give specifically for here in Spain um, the aggregation of different federation of sports um, and it's it's a wonderful project that we we launched I think 2017 and in, in a really few months a few years we collect more than two million registered users so talking about data yeah. this is a big a big data and when it's about how we can do that, we, we basically aggregate all the digital assets throughout yeah. all our ecosystems, right? Okay. So, um, and we, we trigger marketing campaigns, we connect with users in a more personalized way, we communicate, we try to communicate differently. Um, and La Liga, La Liga Pass is, is the latest launch uh, that we actually launched a few weeks ago, okay. first in Indonesia and now is available also in Thailand. And I think is it, from my point of view that I'm coming from this space, from the OTT space specifically, I believe that it is the, probably the biggest uh, launch for a sport league in football. So there are not too many sport leagues that have their own OTT video streaming solutions. Yeah. Right? Um, clearly, you need, you need to balance between um, bringing value to the media partners at the same time go direct to consumer with your own solution. Right? Okay, great. So, um we are actually seeing that um, you know, sport companies are changing the approach from uh, B2B to direct-to-consumer uh, companies. So I wonder why 
uh, why of this shift? Why are you changing and what are the advantages uh, in, uh, in terms of data collecting? Yeah. So we, we just came out from uh, a pandemic, right? Uh, and COVID-19 and brought different kind of uh, changes. One of the big changes is clearly the shift between, but not just in sport, by the way, in pretty much in every industry, yeah. a big shift from a poor B2B traditional kind of business model to a more B2B2C or B2C, in some other cases, business models. Okay. And we see that in sport happening. Um, I believe that sport companies, sport brands now understand that need to have talent in-house, you need to bring the right people, you need to bring what the right you, technology. What, what do you mean by talent? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you find talent? How do you hire? Do, do you have to pay for talent? It's how much? <laughs> how much do you have to pay for talent? It's not easy. Because clearly. for for us, for <coughs> companies, it's extremely difficult to to find this uh, this talent. What, what's your take on that? Sorry, what's your take on that? Well, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm all the time thinking about that, but it's it's really really hard. Yeah, time. it's hard, and specifically in countries in which uh, they are maybe not so used to uh, to work in that way. Yeah. Uh, if you're talking about UK, US, or other yeah. country, it is is probably easier to attract talent. Um, Spain, Italy, France, even Germany, it's yeah. not so easy. Uh, mm. But I, but but I believe now things are shifting, luckily. So um, we have more educations and and people understand better what really matters, and I think data and big data yeah. overall and of data analytics is, is a big part of it, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Fabio, um, how does the uh, COVID-19 affect the sport industry, in your opinion? Yeah, huge, uh, hugely, I would say. Um, when COVID-19 happened, clearly there were no matches live, there was nothing going on, but on the flip side of it, the people start to go live, right? So yeah. the, the, the user, the fans, started to demand content in a, in a moment in which there were no content. Yeah. So clubs, leagues, federation has to start quicker than before the digital transformation. My opinion, basically, we, we fast forward five, seven, eight years with this COVID. Yeah. And sport industry has been clearly affected positively, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, had to be, you know, uh, they had to implant it, new strategy, new ways of engaging with fans uh, from, you know, esports to OTT, uh, NFTs, metaverse, etc. So there is huge transformation right now. We're going to talk about OTT later, but. Um, I, I'm coming from, from Lines. The Lines is a digital consultancy in, uh, based in Bilbao. Uh, we have the chance to work with uh, different uh, uh, business verticals, uh, different companies, different brands. Um, um, in my opinion, the, the sports company uh, digitalization uh, process are quite slow. Uh, I don't know why why this happened in sport because it's, sport is so dynamic, but. Uh, 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 but uh, the, the digitalization is so, so slow. Uh, what is your opinion about that? Yeah, look, a few days ago I was, I was reading a report and of IDC and that, the report was saying that overall, without you know, specifying the industry, but 23% of the company right now have you know, their digital transformation plan in place. And they say 70% of them will have it by the end of 2023. What we truly believe from La Liga perspective, and specifically with me, La Liga Tech's perspective, is that we need to accelerate the digital transformations. And we need to help sport property brands, media partners, to embrace that transformations. Um, taking into place that there, you, you need to have this ecosystem, digital ecosystem at the real core of what you do. And on top of that, you can create different strategy according to the different kind of pillars that you want to attack. Yeah. So from, again, engagement to content enrichment to competition management. So uh, how is the, the Liga Tech helping these companies in, in this uh, digital transformation processes? So we, we have plenty of products that we, we are helping you know, tons of clubs, federations, and leagues. Clearly, the first 
biggest, um, let's say, uh, support is from La Liga Tech to La Liga. Mm -hmm. But with all this technology, this investment that has been done in the last few years, we are now in a position that we want to help you know, other kind of sport property, other kind of brands, even, even brands that are not uh, that have nothing to do with sports no. because we, we have content protection tools which by the way can be used not just only sports but you know uh, throughout a different kind of uh, sectors of the industry. We, we do help them clearly with the video streaming solution like we mentioned OTT, we help them we don't, with uh, from web apps to you know uh, new, new way of engaging with funds. We help them with you know match data analysis uh, with our media coach solutions. We help them with uh, fighting versus the match fixings with our, with our solution as well. So in a series of tools as well to in order to, to compete better in the, in, in the competitions. Okay, and, and which kind of um, analytics tools and, um, and property solutions, uh, property technologies are you using to, to, to track this, uh, this data from, from fans, from supporters? How are, what kind of tools and technologies are you using? So the, the real first thing is, again, interconnected all the digital assets that a sport property or a brand has. That's the real first step. If you connect all of them, you can understand better your funds, right? So um, we use that, that first for first for, uh, party data. First party data. In, in, in con interconnected. Yeah. Sometimes we include those third party data as well, right? So we use audience data, we use um, financial data that we can connect it with the first party data, right? And we use like uh, Fund360 solutions in order to profiling the user, understanding what they're doing, understanding um, the behavior they're doing, why they are going out from the platforms, and, yeah. and they're entering another platform in the same ecosystems. So it's not doubling the name, the, the number of the users. It's about understanding why they are exiting from the platforms and they are entering another if they do that, right? Yeah. So we do uh, with with a big partnership with Microsoft, clearly. Uh, so we use pretty much Microsoft solutions. We 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 have integration, pre-integration with Salesforce. We have pre-integration with tons of the best in class, let's say, third-party solutions that helps. Uh, La Liga Tech uh, yeah. to to build up architecture solution that at the end of the day will uh, will uh, help and um, support properties. So I assume that one of the big challenges of that is to avoid uh, these data silos, and also to to ensure that uh, uh, fan data is uh, is gathered and interconnected. No? So how how do you work on that? How do you, how can you how, how do you avoid these uh, data silos in your uh, data lakes in your yeah? Data silo is a classic, right? So when you when you launch a new a new solution, whatever it's an OTT, a web, uh, an apps, etc., you as a specific as a sport property, you, you generally think to include a data analytics tool for that specific asset. You're not thinking to interconnect it, all your assets in one unique data lake or or, or, or whatever analytics tools. Um, so what we are doing now with the ecosystem, with this di digital ecosystem, is helping to understand really your funds, understanding um, what kind of ca marketing campaigns, for instance, you can do with these funds, understanding what kind of targets you want to. Yeah. So it's about saving money, because if you know your funds, you can save a lot of money, but also uh, increasing. Uh, you know, uh, ROI and, yeah. and, and revenues very fast. At La Liga, for instance, yeah. uh, we, we, we increase 3x free, free uh, the ROI and we save probably more than 100 million euros in terms of, uh, in term of savings uh, because we didn't have to do a lot of paid campaigns in order to acquire users because we know where we wanted to go. We know where the target was but just because we had these ecosystems. You, you talk about first party data. Um, for, for us, for my experience, uh, we have a now big challenge is the, the cookie-less scenario. Uh, companies are actually um, um, thinking about how to deal with this future 
this cookie list feature in which we have used cookies to uh, track users across devices, across platforms. We have used uh, cookies to customize campaigns. Uh, we have used uh, cookies for everything in marketing. And suddenly, uh, different providers, uh, Safari, Chrome, the big providers, are uh, telling us that cookies are going to disappear in the future. So we, uh, we have to prepare for this cookie list scenario. This is, a, this is the big deal. This is a big problem for companies. I know that uh, some of your team are now working on this, uh, on this issue how to solve it. For example, uh, we, we, uh, we are now uh, um, focusing on first-party data, mainly. We are also uh, adopting some solutions, server-to-server -server solutions, to try to avoid ad blockers, uh, to try to avoid browsers who are now uh, blocking cookies. Uh, I think that this is going to be, this is going, perhaps this is going to, in, in, in the, in the midterm, in the short term, it's going to change the way we, we actually do marketing, work marketing. So, well, I think that this is also going to be uh, affect your sport. Okay, I know you you, you have already told me that some of your um, uh, teams are, are now working on that solutions. And it's really depend uh, yeah. here on on the business model, right? Yeah, because there are uh, you were talking about advertisement, avod. Uh, and solution like that, yeah. and it's very different from subscription-based, clearly, solutions. So it really, at the end of the day, it really depends on the, on the business model you want to apply and what kind of strategy you want to apply in order uh, to increase your revenues. But the, the base has to be there. The base has to be data first. So let's talk now about uh, OTT over-the-top solutions, because I think that uh, I know that this is one of the main product, one of your main services. Um, uh, uh, how are you planning to use data to improve the experience of, of the user uh, and to personalize the, the, the experience of the user in, in OTT? How are you using, how are you planning to use this, the data to do that? Yeah, user recommendation, uh, content personalization, yeah. uh, you know, something that now is, is, is pretty common, specific in the over-the-top. We, well, we have talked about uh, we are talking about over the top solution, but I don't know, I don't know if the if the audience is familiar with this concept because yeah. it, for me it was the first time uh, I have ever, ever heard about the over the top solution. So can can you give a, yeah, a brief OTT, introduction to? Yeah, OTT solution is basically a video streaming platforms yeah. that helps to go direct to consumer with mainly video, right? It's a sort of Netflix. So actually La Liga Sport TV and La Liga Pass are basically Netflix of sport, right? So La Liga Pass is the first direct-to-consumer solution. It's Netflix of live football matches for the first and second divisions plus a lot of other VOD yeah. programs, right? Yeah. So if you think about Netflix, if you think about the zone in Spain, that's exactly what it's about in OTT. Yeah, for example, when I, um, I know, for example, that I, um, platforms like um, Netflix are using data to customize the experience of the user. For example, if you are, uh, if you have one specific role, if you are a man, if you are a woman, if you have children, whatever, you are even going to find different uh, um, portraits for each of the films. Okay, you can see different pictures for the same for the same field, uh, depending on your profile, and that's in absolutely incredible how uh, these organizations are able to use this data to customize the experience of the user. So, uh, you also need to have people that <laughs> understand money, data, right? Technology. That's very important. Uh, yeah. So, interpretation of the data, um, triggering the right campaigns in the right moment to the right target is another very important topic, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, and also how you communicate with them is now different if you think 10, ten years ago. Now you can, you can target exactly Iñaki, Iñaki flavors. You know what, is this a fan of Atleti Bilbao or Real Madrid, For right? For sure that I'm so. Atleti Bilbao supporter <laughs> because all the people in Bilbao are going to be Atleti Bilbao supporter. But Exactly. So you yeah. can target Iñaki perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Fabio, um, what are the next battlegrounds for uh, La Liga Tech? In what are um, meta, uh, virtual reality? What are you thinking about? What is the future in, in this? In your yeah, big question, right? Um, we are now working a lot around metaverse and specifically NFTs, right? So we, we are actually close to launch a few new solutions that could help, you know, sport organization to do better 
uh, and increased revenues because at the end of the day, what we uh, we are really focused on ROI, right? For us, is is very important. So everything that we do has to have a return on investment. Yeah. Everything that we do for a partner or for a client has to have a return on investment. So we set up with the client. We understand what is the goal, the ultimate goal. We set up together the KPI, and we track them on a monthly basis. And then we, we set up you know, the proper strategy together. Um, so NFTs is, 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 is probably something that we are really care of, but also other, other way of engage with fans, to be honest with you. So we are also here in the market, understanding from also other parties, what are the new ways of engaging with fans? Um, that can enhance the experience of the funds, retain the, the, the funds much longer in the platforms, and yeah. so increase uh, the ARPU of each user. Yes, that's, that's, the, that's the role of data, to be able to, to make decisions uh, from data, not from opinions. Um, well, uh, I have a last question for you, um, Fabio. Um, uh, what advice? I'm thinking about advices. What advice uh, could you give to sport properties um, who want to begin their own digital transformation process? Um, I would say don't, don't, don't be scared first to uh, hire new people, new talent people. You need to really, if you want to go direct to consumer, if you want to think to have a B2B or B2, B2C kind of model, you need to have the right people for that. Right, you cannot think to go B two C without having any single people that are not coming from that industry or doesn't have expertise. So, really, the first thing is trying to think out of the box. Think that you really need expertise on that. Second thing is use the right partners. So, work with the right partners in order to make it sure that your goal will be will be a success. It's not a failure. From my experience, 80% of the, of the company are trying to engage or partner with the cheapest technology provider. And, and sometimes it can work, but for my experience, 80% of the time it doesn't work, not just because of the price, yeah. because the structure that is behind the partners is not the right fit of what your ultimate goal is. And then also the last point is think long term. I see many, many sport property that you know, they want to launch something and they want to have return uh, the day after. That's not possible in, digitally, in digital. You, need, you really need to think a longer term strategy. Longer term, at least three slash five years terms. That's not so much, but it's still, it's still a good number of years in order to make sure that you, you, you can generate uh, revenues uh, from what you're doing. Okay, Fabio, so thank you very much for your time here.